in a previous video, I covered lots of Roblox Studio tips that were actually really, really cool. So I'm going to go over those again in this video uh, because I think I can get more people to know about these tips. So I'm going to be going over the more simpler ones and I'm going to go over the more, uh, you know, less known ones as I go throughout the video. So we're going to start out with some studio tips. So if we insert a part in our game, if you guys didn't know, if you have your cursor over a corner and press tab, the adjustments for like the movement and stuff, the pivot changes to where that is wherever you want it. So if I wanted to have it over here, I could just put my cursor over here, hold down tab and here it is and I can move it uh, here without actually having to go to my pivot and edit the pivot. Uh, so it's in that spot, I can just have the tab like so. Um, this works for all the things, so if I wanted to rotate something, I could have it at a certain point. Same thing for move, and yeah, really cool tip. So the next one is getting the front face of a part before, uh, you know, a while ago, Roblox had a thing in the properties where you could see the front face of a part, um, but... A lot of people just use decals because if you insert a decal into a part, uh, the orange outline will give you, you know, it'll let you know where the front face is, but we don't actually have to do this. We can just uh, click on our part or whatever, right click, and click on show orientation indicator, and we can see we have this indicator that gives us the front face, and we don't need to uh, get a decal or anything like that, and it stays there, uh, keeps the front face of the parts as we can see here and so this next tip has to deal with scripting all right now see I have this thing here where it's going to make a new part I'm setting all the properties and whatnot now let's say I wanted to rename the part in the script let's say I wanted to call this part main part well now I would have to copy this uh, and paste it for each one which is kind of a pain and you know there may be even more references to this down the line that you would want to fix alright now this doesn't have to be this complicated alright so how you can fix this is if you put your cursor at the beginning of where you define the part so I'm gonna put at the beginning of part here and I say hold down control shift R you will see I'm selecting all the references of the object part and I can just say delete and say main part. Very, very simple. This is really useful in use cases like this where I just have random uh, code happening and I just want to change all references to the part. You can see I have quite a few ref references uh, in the code and if I wanted to change the whole thing, well, I obviously have to change it up here and all the properties, but I'd also have to go into the code and that could be quite confusing if you have complex code and looking for everything. So you can just uh, put your cursor at the beginning control shift R select all the references as you can see here it's all selected and then you know you can call it whatever main part whatever you want and it changes it now this is a little bit of a smaller one but this can help you maneuver through your code so let's say I'm just gonna get rid of all this code that I have here and I am going to make a function and let's say I put parentheses and I want to speed up getting my cursor out of these parentheses. All right, so let's say I'm typing, right? And I say local function, parentheses, and you know, it's kind of, I'm not gonna say it's a hassle, but it's a little annoying having to move your cursor out and then maybe even press enter and stuff like that. Well, we could fix this because how you can maneuver through code is by saying, if we can say local function like A, we can hold down control and use our arrow keys to move through the code as we can see here so going through this whole thing again and making a function local function I say a parentheses hold down control and then the right arrow moves out and I can press enter I use this a lot I use the arrow keys a lot to move around in my code and I find it really useful you can kind of move around some stuff because you can if you wanted to say like game dot workspace dot base play dot color is equal to whatever color three dot from RGB and you wanted to move move through this code and let's say you want to change the property we can hold down control, left arrow key all the way, and then boom, color, you can say position, and whatever. Not. I find it really useful, so that's a really cool thing you can do in your code. And then the last tip I have for scripting is you don't actually have to say get service when you're getting your services. So let's say I'm getting tween service, all right? I don't actually have to say game get service tween service. I can just say game.tween service just like this. 
Now, when I code, you'll probably usually see me use tween service like get service like this is because I use this plugin, uh, which automatically, you know, has the service when I uh, do that and it automatically does get service. So I'm probably not going to use this, but you can actually get services like anything else. Like if you want to say run service is equal to game dot run service, just like this. You don't have to say none of that get service stuff. Um, so yeah, that's another thing you guys can do with your code. All right, so the next tips have to do with your user interface and screen GUIs and stuff like that. So I'm gonna insert a screen GUI, my starter GUI, and I'm going to insert a uh, text label, not text button, text label. And let me just configure this real quick. So I have this text label, and let's say I wanted to ha have a UI stroke in it. All right, so I insert a UI stroke little bit of a stroke if I wanted to up the thickness and I wanted to make it look make it look really cartoony well I can do that and if I set this to 10 make it like have a big thickness on it you can tell that in the B and A and E and you, you can kind of see there's like an overlapping type thing and you can like kind of see through the text label like this little air type thing and this is what happens when you have like big thickness on a text label you know if we don't if we lowered it, it uh, doesn't happen but having a certain thickness and having it too big causes this and it doesn't look good I'm really a perfectionist and I don't I don't want this in my games It actually looks really bad on other devices and uh, even if you have a lower thickness it could pop up on other devices because of the scaling and whatnot uh, it can happen see here on this device so how we can fix this is by going to the properties of the UI stroke and in line join mode you can choose bevel or miter, whichever one actually fixes it. So I'm going to just choose bevel here. Set this back to 10, and we will see we don't have that glitching in the text label anymore, that overlapping where we can see through it. It's fixed now. If we go back to our devices, it's also fixed on every device, as you can see here. Now, the last tip I have for you guys is I think really, really cool. Roblox has custom emojis for the Roblox icon and the premium icon. All right, so in here in the text label, I'm going to get the, or not, it's not the Roblox icon, it's the Robux icon. And if I put this emoji or a symbol in the text, you will see there is a Robux symbol. All right, and there's even a premium one that we can add on to this. It's really, it's like so cool because you know you would usually have to use images for these if you wanted uh in my some of my other games i would need to get images for all these but you can just use these emojis and by the way i'll have these marked in the description i'm not for sure if they'll pop up or not because they're like can, they can be invisible like on twitter and stuff but i'll have them marked and you can actually put these in your text label and you know they're emojis they're really cool and if you can easily if you wanted to set a price for something uh you can easily say like 500 and the emoji and it looks really really nice and if you guys were wondering we can also insert UI stroke here and it works perfectly fine it applies it too and yeah there you guys go a really cool thing you can do uh, with these emojis and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button I'll see you guys in the next video peace